Well, welcome to part two of topic eight, um, surf zone processes. And in this part, we're going to talk about longshore and onshore offshore processes. And part of this will be talking about longshore currents, the longshore drift, and then beach profiles. Now, when waves don't enter the um, arrive at the beach parallel to the coastline, when they have um, some angle with the coastline, then they produce a current parallel to the shore, and that's called called a um, the longshore current. Um, and as we know, uh, in the surf zone. Um, there is actually a lateral current produced by, by breaking waves um, and the component of that current actually runs uh, parallel to the beach and that's what produces this longshore current. The, yes, the, current, the magnitude of the current can be estimated using this equation. Alpha B is the um, angle of the waves relative to the shoreline at the breakpoint. If they're running parallel to the sh shoreline then alpha B equals zero. UMB um, is given by this equation here, the breaking coefficient divided by 2. And remember that that, that breaking coefficient is um, often estimated as 0.78 um, times gravitational acceleration and, um, and um, the water depth at the breaking point all to the square root. And that longshore current actually varies uh, with distance through the surf zone uh, and as a, as a maximum somewhere intermediate within the surf zone. Now the other longshore process I want to deal with is longshore drift um, and that produces a long-term movement of sand um, running parallel along, along the beach. And the way this, the mechanism that produces longshore drift is, the, is through the action of the waves as they run up the, the beach. So we have the swash moving up the, the, beach, the beach and the backwash coming back off the beach. If the waves are running at an angle to the beach, then the swash um, uh, and, and backwash um, can actually flow uh, in different directions. They, are not opposite, they don't flow in opposite directions. So sediment um, here as the wave runs up the beach um, with the swash gets transported up the beach on an angle, uh, at right angles to the, the um, the face of the wave in the direction the wave is traveling. Then as the water drains back off the, the beach, the backwash, it drains down the gradient of the beach and assuming a sort of a parallel um, face on, on the beach, it drains down in this direction. So sediment that was at this point here has been washed up here with the swash and the backwash brings it back down to here. That then repeats its um, with the next wave, um, draining back backwash, and so on, producing this longshore sediment um, transport process, longshore drift. And you can see evidence of this longshore drift here in this photo. We've got a set of groins, these constructed uh, structures. Um, heading out into the surf zone and the purpose of these structures is often to retain sand on the beach um, so that the sand doesn't get completely washed away. Uh, that could be to stabilize the beachfront or it could simply be because the beach is important for recreation. And here we can see the accumulation of sand up to the level of uh, this groin on this side of the groin but on the far side of the groin there's a step down and, and so on all the way along the beach. So in this case the longshore drift is um, in, in towards the photo, so away from the point at which the person who's taking this photo is standing. Here we can actually see at what's called a barrier estuary, and longshore drift um, occurs from the left to the right of this photo in this case. It's, a, it's an estuary um, at the mouth of the Cannes River in, in East Gippsland, and there's quite a strong longshore drift um, along this sort of 90 mile beach coastline, um, crouching along coastline um, in East Gippsland. And the amount of sand being shifted along the beach has completely blocked um, the entrance to the river. It's a relatively low flow river, low flowing river in summer, um, it's, a bit, a bit, it's completely blocked, blocked the river um, and formed a barrier between the river and the coastline. A little bit further along that same coastline to the west, um, this is Lake's entrance, 
And this is the entrance to the Gippsland Lakes, and there's several significant rivers flowing into the Gippsland Lakes. And again, longshore drift is from left to right, um, and, but this uh, particular entrance is important uh, for navigation. There's a number of fishing boats that travel in and out of Lake's entrance to the sea, and so that entrance has to be dredged regularly um, to maintain it for navigation, otherwise it would, be, um, it would become choked up and, and impassable for the fishing boats. Now finally, uh, beach profiles, and here we're really talking about offshore, onshore processes. And we can see some of the typical uh, features of, of a beach profile. Uh, we have a, generally a sort of a, a concave profile as we move out um, through uh, the surf zone and up onto the beach. At the back of the, the beach, the back shore, we get uh, one or two uh, berms, which could be associated with different uh, storm conditions, sort of a winter berm where there's higher water with high, higher storms, um, and a summer berm with calmer waters. Um, some sort of scarp uh, at the top of the foreshore that we, on the video, we can see the, uh, the, uh, the, the foreshore, but the scarp was, was behind us. And then um, we have the, uh, the, the, the profile running down into the water, this concave profile, potentially with a, a longshore bar uh, associated with... Um, uh, the breaking waves um, uh, at the point, the break point, um, running off into the sea. Now, this could be the, the storm profile, which tends to have a lower gradient um, because sediment's being shifted from the beach out uh, to sea, offshore. Um, it, in calmer times with lower winds, lower, lower, um, less swell, the um, the sediment tends to accumulate on the beach, and so we have a steeper beach profile running out to sea. And that gradient of that, the beach profile varies um, with, as we said, with the, the wave energy. We can see here low, low wave energy. We have a lower slope than we would with high wave energy for a given sand grain diameter. And we also see that as we increase the sand grain diameter, the slope decreases. So there's an, an inverse relationship between the, the slope of the beach face and grain size uh, of the sand on the beach.